Hello, beloved. Our reading today is the prophecy and conception of John the Baptist, as told to us by St. Luke the Evangelist. I'm Pastor Steve Billings, and today is Friday of the week of Christmas, December 29th, 2023. Let's begin with our opening versicle. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Our psalm for the week is Psalm 89, beginning at verse 1. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. For I said, Steadfast love will be built up forever. In the heavens you will establish your faithfulness. You have said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant, I will establish your offspring forever and build your throne for all generations. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our hymn for the week is hymn number 357 from Lutheran Service Book, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou wisdom from on high, who orderest all things mightily. To us the path of knowledge show, and teach us in her ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, O come, thou Lord of might, who to thy tribes on Sinai's height in ancient times didst give the law, in cloud and majesty and awe, Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou branch of Jesse's tree, free them from Satan's tyranny that trust thy mighty power to save, and give them victory o'er the grave. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou key of David, come, and open wide on heavenly home. Make safe the way that leads on high, 
and close the path to misery. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou day spring from on high, and cheer us by thy drawing nigh. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, desire of nations, bind in one the hearts of all mankind. Bid thou our sad division cease, and be thyself our King of peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Today's reading is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter, beginning at verse 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. There was in the days of Herod the king of Judea a certain priest named Zacharias, of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren. And they both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense, when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and I am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and not able to speak, until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. And the people waited for Zacharias, and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. 
And when he came out, he could not speak unto them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them, and remained speechless. And it came to pass, that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days his wife Elizabeth conceived, and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me, to take away my reproach among men. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, when the day shall dawn upon us from on high, to give light to them who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today we remember David, prophet and king. We turn again to Celebrating the Saints by William Whedon. David, ancestor of the Lord Jesus, was the greatest of ancient Israel's kings. He ruled from about 1010 B.C. to 970 B.C. When his predecessor on the throne, King Saul, disobeyed God, God rejected Saul as king. The Lord sent the prophet Samuel to a man named Jesse in Bethlehem to anoint a new king. From Jesse's children, Samuel anointed the most unlikely, his youngest boy, David. David was a shepherd and musically gifted. His experience in defending his sheep from predators and his firm trust in the God of Israel gave him courage to confront and strike down the gigantic Goliath of Gath. He entered the service of Saul the king and became fast friends with Jonathan the king's son. David's gift of music soothed Saul's frequent foul moods. 
Saul soon became jealous of David's popularity with the people and sought numerous times to kill him, eventually driving David into exile and hiding. Though he had several opportunities to do Saul harm, David refused to lift a finger against the Lord's anointed. After Saul's death in battle, David assumed first the kingship of Judah and finally of all Israel. He transferred his capital to Jerusalem. His greatness grew and his fame spread. When he wished to build God a house, God forbade him and told him that instead God would build him an everlasting house. A son from his body would build the house for the Lord, and God would establish that son's kingdom forever. Ironically, shortly after receiving this promise, David fell into grave sin. He committed adultery, impregnated another man's wife, and subsequently arranged the murder of her husband. He then took the woman Bathsheba as his own wife. The prophet Nathan confronted him with his sin. David gave no excuses, but simply confessed and repented. God brought temporal punishment on David and his house because of his disobedience, and yet in grace he established David's kingdom through a son whom Bathsheba later bore to him, King Solomon. Chastened, David remained faithful to God through the difficult times that surrounded his final years of life. David is the prime example in the Old Testament of a man who was both simultaneously justified and sinner. His great and lasting gift to the church of all ages is his book of Psalms, called the Psalter, or the Psalms of David. The people of God have delighted to sing these inspired words in all ages. They find in them words to address God in every conceivable circumstance. Let us pray. God of majesty, whom saints and angels delight to worship in heaven, we give you thanks for David, who through the Psalter gave your people hymns to sing with joy in our worship on earth, so that we may glimpse your beauty. Bring us to the fulfillment of that hope of perfection that will be ours as we stand before your unveiled glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We conclude again today with Luther's morning prayer. Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things, Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, order our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. God bless your day, beloved.